Okay. Good evening, Father Alexander, Opa, and Good evening. Uh, no, uh, we are going to talk about uh, our suffering and God's goodness. So, uh, what's the connection between God, which we call as all good, and then uh, the loving God? With what's the connection with it? With uh, that concept, from that concept, with our suffering, especially in today's world, like the injustice and then the coronavirus and everything. So, can we start? Sure. Go on. Please. So, wants to talk first? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. God is love, and man is suffering. Well, first we see that there is a problem in this world now mm -hmm. and we can say that the problem is men destroy the creation of God mm. as we can see the creation of God is good God creates everything good seven mm. times in the Bible it's written that and God see that all things is good mm. and we can say and we know from the teaching of the church that mm -hmm. God creates everything in this world for his external glory. Mm. And by destroying his creation, we are against the creator. Okay? And we mm. can see that the Bible says, death is the punishment for sin. Mm. So, do you want to continue? Sure. That... Um, History repeats itself. Yeah. And for that reason, history worldwide, this is not an Indonesian thing, mm -hmm. worldwide high school education almost forbids the teaching of A, history, B, literature. Mm -hmm. Every empire in the world started off good and it finished because people got money and once they got money, relationships break. Yeah. I remember when I was, I'm 68 by the way. Um, I remember when I was a little kid as a three, four year old. I remember my parents, immigrants to Australia, Ukrainian, I'm ethnically Ukrainian for somebody who don't know. My parents migrated to Australia and they, my dad's and mum's friends came and helped build build our house. My parents went and helped to build their house. They were all very, 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 very close. Mm -hmm. They got money. The relationships became more distant. Mm -hmm. That is the reality of sin. Mm -hmm. What Tian is saying is that we have the gift of choice mm -hmm. and when we choose selfishness we're choosing against god uh -huh. okay so that's yeah if i see the patterns it's uh it's just the same like what happened in genesis right like god created everything good and then man becomes selfish man wants to satisfy satisfying himself and then the, the whole Roman humanity empire. is doomed. The Roman Empire. Yeah, yeah. The first and second and third Egyptian Empire. Mm -hmm. The dynasties of China. Mm. All of them started off as relatively idealistic or great leaders. Yeah, and yeah, fell yeah. apart because uh, of uh, sex and corruption. Mm. Okay. Every empire. I mean, if I may, an interesting little thought. Mm -hmm. The shopping mall, single climate enclosed shopping complex, mm -hmm. which we now call the, the mall, was developed. It's basically an American product, an American system that has exploded throughout the world. Mm -hmm. It gave you perfect climate, it gave you perfect mood music. It even gave you, made you buy things that you had no intention of buying. Yeah. The hardest good. thing, you see, the mall is not 
a charitable thing. No. It's to extract your money from you. Mm. The Moor was the greatest empire of the middle to middle 20th century till now. But mm. Corona has shown us, and we were very happy with them all. Yeah. This is reality, you know. I remember, I remember you telling me, Cliff, oh, yeah. most of the times I go for a walk, it's in the mall. Yeah. You too, here. Most of the times you go for a long walk. No, he walks from university to, to home. But most people, most of their walking is done in the mall. Yeah. Not anymore. Shopping, people that used to work in the mall, not an Indonesian thing, a universal thing throughout the world. People that work in as shop assistants in the mall are usually not from wealthy families. Yeah. This is the only job they, they, they have a limited education. This is the only job they can do. So they do mm. it. Security guard, cleaner, shop assistant. Corona closed the mall. These people are all out of a job. That shows us how fragile the society is mm. and can we say that the sin is ours yours and mine mm. we went to the how many times have either of you gone to the mall and bought something unnecessary mm. speak well both of you speak yeah i remember like whenever uh there, there was once a time, especially when I was still in high school. Uh, I feel weird if I go to the mall and not buying anything. Like I will buy something, even if it's just a book or anything. Yeah, yeah I, I remember that point. But thank God that it doesn't happen again. What about you, Tia? In Matungas, I, I live in Matungas, and Matungas is still sort of village. Mm -hmm. When I walk in in the in my village or in my home village, uh -huh. I walking, I look at the sky, I look at everything around me, I think of God. Mm. I can't think of God when I'm in the mall. Well, you can make yourself think of God in the mall, but uh, it's hard to do there rather than in nature. So that reminds me of the movies that I watched this morning about a monk that was asked by a priest to carry it alive and he said he cannot think of God while he's while his focus was, is on the light mm. while we can see the nature we can we remember God we see the creation of God we remember the creator we destroy the nature we destroy the creator we against the we, we destroy the creation we destroy the creed we against the creator That's, yeah. Well, the mall is the perfect example of supporting that. Yeah. The mall is totally, we create, somebody created a world whose purpose is to extract you from your, to extract your money from you. Mm. It isn't to provide you with a service. Mm. So is it safe to say that uh, men's suffering is because uh, men love something other than God, and like God is always there, but we are not attracted to God. What we are attracted is to the passing things. In, what do you think? In the Gospel <laughs> of Saint John, it's written that uh -huh. in the Word of God, there uh -huh. is life, which mm. which means that outside the Word of God, without God, there is no life, and if there is no life. There's only death, and that is suffering. That, as I mentioned, is the reward of sin. We're doing something very trivial here, trying to create a little ra a little baby rainforest mm. in our front yard. Mm. Why? Me, for a very selfish reason. Mm -hmm. I like it. I want to live in the middle of a beautiful rainforest. Mm. That I look outside, I turn on YouTube, find the right sounds, I'm in a rainforest. Mm. And as a Christian witness. Mm. 
But when people come in here, for them to see nature and see God, you're not going to see God by looking at a concrete plastic jungle. No. Man was never no. created for live by himself. Ah. Just the beginning. Thank you. So, uh, what's the connection between nature, uh, nature in good condition, our environment with our Christian faith, with uh, our life in God? What's the connection? You and me. Okay. So the, obviously, now the answer is so obvious, it's invisible. Mm. God created nature. God didn't create concrete and plastic. Mm. When you go into any of these eating places, mm. I cannot use commercial names. Mm. There is nothing there other than concrete, steel and plastic. Yeah. There is no, the beef is not natural. Uh -huh. I have seen I can't say the name. <laughs> I have seen a company that produces fast food. Uh -huh. Buy cattle. <laughs> By what? I used to teach cattle. Are you cows? I used oh, yeah. to teach in a seminary in a country mm -hmm. town in rural uh, Australia. Mm. And uh, they said, come on, let's see the cattle sales, Bob. Mm. And then I went and saw cows. Be My God, these cows were so old, they had to be carried on crutches almost. Mm -hmm. Or in a wheelchair. And then I said, I was talking with the buyer. I said, what happens to them next? Well, they get killed, the skin gets taken off, and everything else gets mashed. Mm -hmm. Bones, liver, kidneys, everything. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the buns which they make cannot be legally called bread. They cannot legally be called bread because they have so much sugar in them. Mm. Is that a consequence of God? God doesn't. Yeah. God doesn't expect, didn't intend you to eat poison. Mm. God doesn't intend you just to eat branded food. If you do, I'm sorry, you've gone against God. Mm. Produce as much as you can. Look, create a little forest to give Christian witness that you do, in fact, love God and his creation. Mm. It sounds elementary and basic, but most people prefer that. What is the biggest example of civil now I've read I've read five books about this. Mm. What is the biggest example of uh, justification of sin? When a society destroys the real forest, mm. it feels justified, they justify themselves by making plastic forests and selling them. You can go to any hardware store. Yeah and buy a fake rainforest fake tree a fake tree fake vines fake flowers yeah and let's are... make plastic flowers beautiful uh -huh. a pla <laughs> in ukraine in odessa ukraine <laughs> i saw my first plastic um palm tree mm. it was outside a bar it was a pink palm tree mm. never saw a pink palm tree before but we we justify our our sin and make no joke about it. Destroying rainforests and things is a sin. Mm. But we feel better because we made a plastic one. Mm. Styrofoam. It's just like fooling yourself. <coughs> Styrofoam essentially will never decay. Oh, it'll break up into smaller pieces. <coughs> the animal, then you and I, will eat the styrofoam, but it will never break up. Yeah. <coughs> and the fact that you and I will eat the styrofoam is our payment for yeah. not caring. Yeah. <coughs> well, we use printed icons. We use also electric candles in the church. 
we use also some fake signatures, but the purpose is still the same. Like the icons purpose, even though it's plastic icons, the purpose is to for us to pray, for us to direct our hearts to God. While think about the plastic trees, the purpose is only to only one. It's just to make it look beautiful. It's just to satisfy our ourselves or ego. Or to fool ourselves, to lie to ourselves. Yes, <laughs> the purpose, the real purpose for the trees, which is for the natures, uh, it is not there. It's a lie. Yeah, a plastic, it is against a God. plastic, uh, a plastic candle with a plastic light is a lie. Yeah, a printed icon is a print of an icon. Uh huh. Replica that of replica. Baptism. The symbol. Uh -huh. Now this. The sim why we are now going very strongly into the direction of total immersion baptism. Mm. The symbol of baptism is water. The symbol of this and pouring water on a child's head and calling that baptism is having a symbol of a symbol. So even in our theology, we've learned the delicate art of compromise. Uh -huh. Either we use real, you can buy fancy icon candle, icon, icon uh, oil, uh, icon lamp oil. Uh -huh. he, he, he puts in the generic cooking oil, uh -huh. but it's real. It's something that you can point to and say, yes, this is real. So it will uh, make you more feel connected to the divine reality or? Reality. To reality. Yeah. It helps you to put your feet, put your feet on, put, uh, to, to stand on that ground of reality. So something like that. We, but we all know what fake grass is. Uh-huh. Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have a field of a football field of fake grass. You bring a cow there in the middle of the football field of fake mm -hmm. grass. What does the cow think? <laughs> what is this? The cows look at the cow looks at it and confused. We the tragedy is we are no longer confused by our own lies. Mm. The fake trees, the fake food, the fake this, the fake that. I once heard um, the Sunday say, you can eat hot dogs on Good Friday. Yes. It's, it's uh, made in a chemical factory anyway. Mm. So we can say that too many lives that our modern culture has set, our modern culture has developed, that we uh, are at the point that we suffer if we don't get that lie, if we if we find, if we get back to the reality, we suffer because of that, because we already love those lies. Yeah. Is that... The shopping mall, going to the mall. When does the last, you don't go, your lives, you're millennials. You can't uh, live without the mall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going for a walk, it's through the mall, this, that. It's a millennial thing. Mm. For three months now, you can't. Your life has changed. And you're realizing now you were dependent on a lie which was created by somebody to extract more money out of you. Mm. A casino is not a charitable place. Yeah. It's a place where idiots go that think they'll get something for nothing. 99.9% mm. .9 people lose money in, in casinos. It's not no. a good thing. <coughs> So, because we know all these things, what we personally as Christians can do to fix at least ourselves first, and then after that, maybe the whole world, the, the world. What can we do? Well, well, of course, first we have to acknowledge this problem first. Exactly. First uh, thing you have to say: yes, there is a problem. And I am a part of the problem, mm. not the problem. Oh, we're very good. I'm a great authority on your sins and I'm a great authority on TMC's and on uh, anybody else's sins. 
But me, no. Anything that I do vaguely wrong is totally justifiable. Mm. I don't see me, no. Old little ones, I might swear occasionally, but they don't do anything wrong. No. You see, we're all, we have to acknowledge our sinfulness. Two, acknowledge the fact that the reason why plastic, a fake plastic concrete world exists is because I enjoy denying the reality of God's creation. Why do we sin? Because we like it. Acknowledge that you're a part of a problem. Then, my standard suggestion, like outside here, we're beginning to develop a bit of the garden rainforesty thing. And then, I know people who have an urban farm. They, mm -hmm. They're totally self-sufficient of vegetables that they grow in the city in their house. Mm -hmm. Okay? Not mm -hmm. everybody has got the moral character to be able to do that because that requires a strong moral character but we can all grow a little bit of chili grow a little mm. bit of parsley begin to develop our skills at being minimalistic growers of things and that becomes a prayer that becomes a prayer because we are working with God. Does that make sense? Very Does that make sense. sense to both of you? It very makes sense. Why? Do you have anything? Uh, your, th your thoughts? Mm? Any thoughts? No. Mm, my thoughts. No one of us can escape death. No mm -hmm. one of us is sinless. So, God, the Lord, has come into this world and shouting out repentance and we repent well we we can do everything that that is that we can do to repair this nature the the award of sin is death but thanks to god that we are a christian there is a hope for us death is no longer an eternal punishment for us as a christian there is hope after death there's a promise of salvation you see by creating a little non-plastic concrete world we are cooperating with god it's already the sign of that hope that can save right yeah this is a little example of hope. Tien obviously is Minahasa. Minahasa. Mm. Minahasa people are chili people, correct? Mm. Would it be wrong? Believe me, we are very Minahasa here in the South when it comes to chili. <laughs> that, uh, would there be something wrong with us growing chili here? Why no. Not? <laughs> Why not? Uh. Is that an acknowledgement? Is that a way to help solve poverty? If you begin to teach poor people a tin can, soil, here's a few seeds. Before they just ate nasi. Now they can have nasi and chili, nasi and parsley. They can have nasi and something. You're giving people a basic little food. When you give them food, they can have food, but they're hungry tomorrow. Mm. But if you show them how to grow chili and parsley, and this is this is what you can do to do it, you're giving them, you're contributing to their education. If we are really Christian, <laughs> this is the big one. If we are really Christian, should we not? be talking about opening up i don't want to use the word college nor academic institution a teaching place to show how poor people can plant something 
in their poverty-stricken life, how they can create change in their poverty-stricken life. So the simplest things like that is already helping in building the kingdom of God in the world? I think so. You don't have to be theoretical, abstract, and wow. <laughs> Some yeah. of these extremely simple things. Is this a prayer? Yeah. This discussion? No. The, yes, A, this discussion, and B, teaching a desperately poor person, you don't have to just eat nasi from the garbage dump. Mm. Here is how you can grow something. Is it a lot? Come on. Mm. But it's a start. Yeah. Is that a prayer? Yeah. Is this conversation a prayer? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, the Catholic teaching say that discussion about the Bible will again plenary indulgence. <laughs> <laughs> we don't believe in plenary indulgences anymore. <laughs> At least the Catholic Church doesn't. Um, <laughs> okay. But, um, that, that's a nice uh, one. That's a nice one. But, uh, but seriously. Uh huh. This kind of conversation is doing exactly what Tian says. Mm. It's doing what the Bible says. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Is it a blessing to be poor? It should, be, it should help somebody go from poverty to not luxury, but not poverty. That's what I said, the extreme fragility of the, the mall, the 21st century urban environment. It's, as I said, it's not an Indonesia thing, it's a worldwide thing. Look at the United States. Corona and hello, I'm not talking about the morality of the demonstrations. They have, they have the most uh, people dying of Corona. I mean, I could die of Corona next week, any of us can. But the United States has got the largest number, Brazil the second largest number in the world. Mm. So, you know, we need to do proactive things to stop pollution, to stop the plastic, artificial food society that we created. When you buy food, everybody knows. Everybody knows that MSG is bad. It's not a secret. You buy MSG. Mm. Everybody knows that using a lot of salt will increase your blood pressure. Fine. So there are fools that take blood pressure tablets and still use a lot of salt. <laughs> Here is a point, my last point. What if we were open to being a place which had um, a plastic shredder and we shred plastic mm. so it becomes reusable. We then are contribu big contributors to lessening pollution. Single-use plastic bottles then aren't single-use plastic bottles anymore. Yeah. They can be a chair, they can be a park bench, they can be a bowl. Yeah. Would people give to something like that? Here's a question, no, a challenge. Would any of us, anybody, donate? We don't need a big machine. Cliff, what's the more or less the price in Rupia? Uh, I think my friend said it would be customized. Uh, well, if we see it online... If, if what are we I talking think. about in money? Oh. In money? Yeah, in money. A Ten million. How much? Ten million, I think. Sure. Okay, fine. Would anybody be willing to donate something of that sum so that we could buy a plastic shredder and ask people, give us a plastic. Don't dump it. Don't put it in the rubbish. Give it to us. Yeah, it could be one of the things that we as a community can contribute. I think so. Okay. Okay. 
as the last thing to end our conversation this time. Uh, beside the recycling project that we propose, what can we do like this moment or even or yeah, tomorrow, this moment, as our attempt to answer the call, God's call uh, on today's problem like this? First, we talked about, we talked, we answered the question. Yeah. First, acknowledge the fact that we are a part, as individuals, we mm. are a part of the problem. Mm. We're very great authorities at blaming the system. No, it's not the system, it's us, you and me. That uh, find a solution instead of dumping plastic bottles, bring them here. Basic vegetables, basic well. little things, not big things, little things. So as to begin to recreate nature. Yeah. Start thinking about your own life, how mm. dependent you, uh, millennial, you guys are a very shopping mall dependent people when it yeah. comes to social life. Mm. So, but you left that now. Meditate a little bit on how your life has changed and should you return? That's your conversation now. What can you do today? Should you return to the shopping mall mentality? Mm. Or should you begin to create a more God created surroundings for your life? Okay. Yeah. What do you think? I agree totally with Father Olex, but I just want to remind you always what St. Paul said in Corinthians. Mm. Sebab segala sesuatu, segala jerih payahmu jika kamu lakukan dalam persekutuan dengan Tuhan, jerih payahmu tidak akan sia-sia. For all mm. things that you do with God, nothing of your efforts will be in vain. An obvious... But it, that's the funny thing about this. Tian didn't say anything clever. St. Paul didn't say anything clever. I didn't say anything clever, neither did we're stating the extremely obvious. Yeah. But we're all in denial because the psychology of, uh, of um, yeah, the yeah. psychology of uh, food buying and spending money, uh, they're all victims of it. Of course, yeah. a branded product is better. <laughs> I worked as a port chaplain in the port of Melbourne for many years. Mm. And uh, a Filipino guy, quite mm. a few Filipinos work on ships. A Filipino mm. guy said, Father, a present for you. A pair of extremely expensive branded sneakers. I said, I can't, this is too expensive. They're knockoffs, they're fake. The only difference between the fake one and the real ones, these will last twice as long as the branded one does. But we believe advertising. Uh. If we believe advertising rather than God, we deserve what we get. Yeah. So first, by acknowledging the problem, it's actually, it really contributes to what will happen next, right? Yeah. We have to acknowledge we're a part of the problem. And when we follow the branded image, we are not following God. Mm. Um, and that's frightening. Uh, okay. Okay. I think we're done. Hmm? I think we're done for today. Yeah, I think it's enough. Anything what you want to add, Yeah. Uh, I just mm -hmm. want to remind about that we always in the liturgy we always give and hope. The priest always receive that glory be to you, O Christ, our God, our hope, glory be to you. And if you guys allowed me, I want to receive that Psalm one hundred and twenty one for the end of this conversation. Okay. Okay. Kemuliaan kepada Bapa dan Putra dan Roh Kudus sekarang selalu dan sepanjang segala abad. Amin. Marilah kita sujud menyembah di hadapan Kristus Allah kita. Marilah kita sujud menyembah di hadapan Kristus Raja Allah kita. Marilah kita sujud menyembah di hadapan Kristus Raja sendiri Allah Raja dan Allah kita. 
Aku melayangkan mataku ke gunung-gunung dari manakah akan datang pertolonganku. Pertolonganku ialah dari Tuhan yang menjadikan langit dan bumi. Ia tak akan membiarkan kakimu goyah. Penjagamu tidak akan terlelap. Sesungguhnya tidak terlelap dan tidak tertidur. Penjaga Israel, Tuhanlah penjagamu. Tuhanlah naunganmu di sebelah tangan kananmu. Tuhan akan menjaga engkau terhadap segala kecelakaan. Ia akan menjaga nyawamu. Tuhan akan menjaga keluar masukmu dari sekarang sampai selama-lamanya. Kemuliaan kepada Bapa dan Putra dan Roh Kudus sekarang selalu dan sepanjang segala abad. Amin. Haleluya, haleluya, haleluya. Kemuliaan bagimu ya Allah. Haleluya, haleluya, haleluya. Kemuliaan bagimu ya Allah. Haleluya, haleluya. Kemuliaan bagimu ya Allah. Berikanlah berkat kita blessing. A blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with all of us. Amin. Amin. Okay. okay, I think that's the conversation. Thank you, Ian, for the prayers. Thank you, this, Thank you, Thank you, you for the Thank you for our viewers. Uh, we're hoping to see you uh, in our next discussion and at the conference, of course. And then, uh, yeah, may God bless you.